Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll talk about Apex classes and methods. A class is a template or blueprint from which objects are created. The basic structure of an Apex class looks like this. It can contain variables, for example, integers, boolean values, strings, etc. A class can also contain methods. Methods are actions available to objects of your class. We can define the logic inside each method. We can define what inputs are required, if there are any, and what value is returned, if there is any. Return type is simply the data type, collection, or class that's returned when your method is called. For example, if our method took two integers and added them, our return type would be an integer. If we don't want our method to return anything, we can use the keyword void. Method name is whatever you want to call your method. Make sure to choose a method name so descriptive that anyone can understand it. Also, don't forget to use camel case. Camel case is the practice of writing compound words or phrases omitting spaces or hyphens starting with a lowercase letter. For example, this phrase in camel case would be this, with no spaces, starting with a lowercase letter. Input1 type is the data type, collection or class that represents your first accepted input. An input1 variable is the variable name you are assigning it to. So you can reference it in your method's logic. You can add more inputs to your method by separating them with commas. Let me run you through this example. My class is the name of the class. This keyword public means that other Apex code in the Salesforce instance can access it. We have this method called say hello that doesn't return anything. So you have the keyword void. In case the method was returning some value like a number, you would not use the keyword void. Number of friends is the argument we are passing and it is of integer data type. We have a for loop initialized at 0, incrementing by 1 and every time the loop runs, we are printing out a hello statement to the debug log. Hello is a string, therefore we have these quotes. Remember that every statement ends with a semicolon. In Apex, we can define top-level classes, also called outer classes, as well as inner classes. Inner class is a class defined within another class. You can only have inner classes one level deep, like this one. This keyword public is called an access modifier. You have to use the access modifiers such as public or global in the declaration of a top-level class. If you use the public access modifier, you are declaring that this class is visible in your application or namespace. This means within your org, someone else can write Apex and call your class and use the functionality you built. There is another access modifier you can use, that is global. This access modifier declares that this class is known by all Apex code everywhere. You would want to use this when you have to build some functionality in your org that needs to talk to an application outside your Salesforce org, like integrating your accounting system with Salesforce. Any functionality you develop with Apex to integrate with an external system using SOAP or Vistil is called a web service. SOAP and Vistil are open standards to integrate web applications. So any class that contains methods defined with the web service keyword must be declared as global. If a method or inner class is declared as global, the outer class must also be defined as global. I want to make a small note here. You don't have to use an access modifier in the declaration of an inner class. The default access for inner class is private. The private access modifier declares that this class is only known locally, that is, 
only by this section of the code. There are optional definition modifiers such as virtual, abstract, and so on. We just talked about access modifiers for Apex classes. They can be public or global. A class can also have variables and methods. You can define access modifiers for these methods and variables too. They can be private, protected, public, or global. Let me briefly talk about these different access modifiers. Private. This is the default and means that the method or variable is accessible only within the Apex class in which it is defined. If we do not specify an access modifier, the method or variable is private. Protected. This means that the method or variable is accessible within the class but also visible to any inner classes in the defining apex class and to the classes that extend the defining apex class. Public. This means the method or variable can be used by any apex in this application. Global. This means the method or variable can be used by any apex code that has access to the class and not just the apex code in the same application. This access modifier should be used for any method that needs to be referenced outside of the application, either in the SOAP API or by other Apex code. If you declare a method or variable as global, you must also declare the class that contains it as global. While writing code, we use variables as some kind of mutable local storage. Like our classes, we need to use modifiers and some keywords to declare them. Here's a syntax to declare variables. We have the modifiers public, private, protected or global, some keywords like static and final, then data type, variable name and assigned value. Data type and variable name are the required ones and others are optional. We just talked about access modifiers like private, protected, public and global just a moment ago. Final variables can only be assigned a value once, either when you declare a variable or inside a constructor. You must assign a value to it in one of these two places. Static final variables can be changed in static initialization code or wherever defined. To define a constant, you want to use both static and final keywords. I also want to talk about keywords with and without sharing. You can use the with sharing or without sharing keywords on a class to specify whether or not to enforce sharing rules. The with sharing keyword allows you to specify that the sharing rules for the current user to be taken into account for a class. You have to explicitly set this keyword for the class because Apex code runs in system context. In system context, Apex code has access to all the objects and fields. This is to ensure that code won't fail to run because of hidden fields or objects for a user. Use the without sharing keywords when declaring a class to ensure that the sharing rules for the current user are not enforced. I would like to make a small note here. If a method is defined in a class declared with with sharing is called by a class declared with without sharing, the method will execute with sharing rules enforced because it is defined in a class with sharing. In summary, a class is a template or blueprint from which objects are created. You can have variables and methods and other classes inside a class. The outer class can have public or global access modifiers. Like classes, variables and methods also have access modifiers. They can be private, protected, public or global. With sharing keyword allows you to specify that the sharing rules for the current user be taken into account for a class. You want to use the without sharing keyword when declaring a class to ensure that sharing rules for the current user are not enforced. In the next lecture, we'll talk about 
Salesforce Object Query Language, Sockle in short.